Uh, to go to speak to the people. Yeah. 
Hi, everybody. Anybody there? Hey, it's Zach. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? I hear you, Nancy. Oh, here we go. There we go. Can you hear me? Yes. Me? Yes. Not if you can hear me. Okay. Thanks, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Helen's having trouble joining. So, oops. Let's see. Uh, my phone's busted, so. Let's try and get to her. Oh, she got in. Quarter pounder cheeseburger plate. I am unmuted. Hey, John. Sounds like there? Jake. Sounds like Jake. I don't see him though. Yeah, no, this is John. I don't know if you're talking about me. Hey, John. Yeah, I didn't have any luck with that link you sent me trying to get uh, into the meeting. So I just dialed by, so I'm, I'm talking to you on the phone. Cool. So yeah, you just won't be able to see. Zach and Tom, can you say something so I can understand whether? Oh, I know. Hold on. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay, got it. Got I'm it. Got it. Mute. <laughs> okay. I'm here. I'm here. I see Helen. I see Zeno. Who's five zero eight three four nine seventy eight hundred? Must be John. That's me. That's John. Okay, John. Great. So that's one, two, three, four of you. Is that a quorum? I believe so. Even without the chair? Uh, yeah, Dave just texted me. He's not going to make it. He's having some issues, he said. 
Okay. So, um, and Jake's going to be a little bit late. All right. So I, I had, uh, David asked me to find someone to chair. I'm, I'm willing to do it, although I'm going to be taking minutes at the same time. Uh, unless someone else wants to do it. Ooh, under. Um, there wasn't much on the agenda, right? Yeah, just two items. Okay. Let me see if I can find my agenda. It's approving the minutes and then the overwintering memo that I forwarded. I don't know if people had a chance to look at that. Yeah, I did. Okay, so no volunteers to chair. <laughs> <laughs> I can do I'm it. a little bit of a loss because I really can't see anybody. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I'm looking at the uh, the notes. I mean, I'll do it if you want to. If you're going to be typing, Zach, is that what you're saying? Um, yeah, but no big deal. I can do it. It's a short agenda. Yeah. All right. Because I uh, just copied and pasted my meeting reminder here, and I don't even see the agenda on here, so I must have left that out. But I think it was just two items, right? Yep. All right. Well. Okay. I'll so leave you, Zach. Okay, it's uh, six oh six. I'll call the meeting to order. Okay. And uh, the first um, item on the agenda is the minutes from May twenty eighth. Did uh, did you guys get them in in my email about a half an hour ago? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I, there was one. Um, the, the attendance was wrong on there. I noted. Um, but if you, if someone could help me out with that, um, it's from last time. Um, Tom, were you here last time? Yeah, I was here last time. Yes. Yeah, I've got you on there. Um, I know Chip wasn't. Um, but I couldn't remember if Damien was there or not from the last meeting. He was. Yeah, I believe he was. Okay. He was the one who said that we should have the um, clam net information. Oh, Correct. right. That's right. Yep. Okay, so I'll adjust that. Um, and if you need a minute to look over the minutes, please take a minute. Um, if you have something, go ahead and speak up. Hey, Zach, I thought Barbara Brasnell was uh, also in attendance with Martha. Okay, thank you. I don't have my sign in sheet anymore. Right? Yeah, I know. Was right. Helen here last week too? Or last time. Yes, Helen was there, and I want to say, yeah, I think it, you're right, Barbara Brenzel. Yeah. And then there was somebody who I don't know if we knew who it was. I don't remember. So right. I guess that would probably be a good thing to do at the when we begin every yeah. meeting. Do you guys can you guys identify everybody that's attending right now? Yeah, I think I can see it on my screen here. All right. Well, you might as well write them down right now because people are going to be joining late. I guess it sounds like too. And uh, yeah. sometimes it just way... comes up with phone numbers, though. So we'll have to find a way to. Right. Um, they are. So it's three four nine. The seventy eight hundred number is me. So uh, and I just tried again to click on that link, and it's just it, it takes me to Zoom, but then it wants me to enter a bunch of stuff, and I don't, I, you know. Okay, and I've got Zeno on here. Yep. Yep. Nancy, Becca, Tom, myself, um, Jake Puffer will be joining shortly, hopefully. Helen. I and, see Helen on here. Oh, okay. I don't. Oh, let's see here. Yep. Helen got her. Anyone have anything else from last, the minutes from last time? Well, I can make a motion to approve the minutes with the changes we just made. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Tom's made a motion to approve the meeting minutes from May 28, 2020. And John has seconded the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 
Exactly. I think one of the things just procedurally you should probably just go in order when it comes time to seeing who's for. I think uh, we're all okay. for at this time, but do it like roll one at call. a time. It'd I actually roll. think you're supposed to do a roll call vote. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. John. Okay, let's try that again. So that would be um, Rebecca Taylor. Or I. Okay. Um, <laughs> Whatever. Tom Sigia. Yes, I approve. John <laughs> Duane. Yes. Um, so I'm changing my screen. And that's it, right? One, two, three. And myself in favor of. of Okay. Motion passes four to zero. Um, the next item on the agenda is overwintering changes. Nancy, would you like to speak to that? Sure. Um, so I have my memo up on my computer. Bear with me as I read it. Um, so when Everything was happening back in January and February. I was getting a lot of return certified mails. And so that means that people weren't aware of, of having had an infraction. And most times these were just written warnings, but you had to write warnings and mail them. Um, so she said the town council suggested that because then I would text people or email people and it just seems like today there's so many more ways of letting people know, including in person. So she suggested instead of writing after receiving a written warning, um, we just put following notice of a violation either in person via phone or by written notice. The licensee has seven days to comply. Uh, yeah, I looked at that. Um, that seems pretty reasonable to me. Does. Yeah, yeah. I, I looked at that too. It seemed good. Mm -hmm. Only if the lawyer is happy with it, right? Did they the, yes, that? town council is the one who suggested that language. So that's fine. Did they get returned because there was no one to sign for them, or did they get returned because people refused to sign for them? I don't know. Fair way to know. Okay. All right. Hey, would someone like to make a motion on that? Uh, yes, so what, um, uh, somebody else that's good with that, I, I'm not looking at it right now, so somebody that's good with the uh, statute number regarding overwintering. This was the I could, I could make a motion to, uh, to replace the current language that requires a response within written notice to the language proposed by the attorney, which are well, in you writing. Say at this, just at, writing just to be clear. Your work. Somebody else should make the motion. Okay. Nancy, uh, what were you going to say? I just, you know, it was proposed by the attorney, but I think you should not, I think you should say proposed by the constable if that's, you're going to make the motion or just does anybody have the document in front of them? I, I have it. Yeah, so um, I have it. One of you could read it. I will. Um, Can I ask you a question first, just to make sure we're doing this? Is this for going into effect this year? Yes, it will be. So I have it on the agenda for the July 28th select board meeting. It will be advertised as a public hearing and uh, it will be the whole package. The overwintering changes from, uh, I guess, 7.19.5, this change, and then the overwintering contract. So those three things will have a public hearing at the, I think it's July 28th, it's the second select board meeting, um, fourth Tuesday of July. And how does this affect people that have already obviously have their uh, licenses this year? I mean, I know it's a change in regulations and you would think, you know, like, what if somebody's not happy with it and... There'll be a public it. hearing in July that people can attend, and, I, and um, I'll certainly send that out in a crier so everybody in the community is aware. All right. I don't think that there's anything that's, gonna, that's onerous on people, if you know what I mean, to, to do, so it's fine. But 
you know, just anticipating somebody's going to squawk about it in the middle of a season that you're changing it. The only thing that I can see with it is that if you send written warning, it's a formal document. Whereas, I mean, like a phone call would be a formal document, but if you texted me and I told you I didn't get a text, <laughs> then there would be a way to contest it. But maybe I, say, I like the change. The change is fine. Yeah. I think the change covers covers everybody. It's very nice. I can do email. I mean, email as long as it's a, a formal notice of violation. But yep. But I, I agree. You never know if somebody just doesn't want to sign for it because they know something bad's coming, then they yeah. won't sign for it. And then where are you? You know, because they didn't receive it. Yeah, and they well, they can do the same thing with. Uh, I never got that email. Oh, yeah, there's really no paper trail. I mean, there's no <clears throat> surefire way. Yeah. Well, I can, what the, what the, what town council said is, you know, I could email it and then make a phone call to let them know to check their email and that this is what's in the email so that they're actually being informed in two ways, right. one in writing more formally and then one on the phone. Um, and then I just document, I document what I did. Yep. Okay. Um, hey, Nance, can I ask you a question? I, mm -hmm. Did you ask by any chance, can you post it anywhere? Can you post it on the shack? Yeah. That, uh, you know, we're looking for, uh, you know, so and so. Five people in, need to show up. <laughs> who's in violation? <laughs> you know, so then the word oh. gets out and people can. Oh, no, no, I would never. Can't do that? You no. can't do a list of shame. No. It's not around here. <laughs> the first person uh. to see it will tear that right down. Well, yeah, I, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's something between, you know, the constable and the shell fisherman. Yeah. Right. All right. Okay. The shellfish department and the shell fisherman. It's, it's not right. like. <laughs> I know other, I know other groups do that or other committees oh, do it. I see. But, but that sounds just, just asking. Um, All right. Here was the motion made, right? So. Okay. Would it be enough to make the motion just to accept the suggested change proposed by the constable and then attach that to the minutes? 19.6. Yep, I have that in the minutes. Okay. Change two. Okay, I'll, I'll second that. Okay, to make it official, I will make a motion to accept the suggested change to 7.19.16 as proposed by the constable. It's just point six, Zach. Oh, yep. Thank you. Not sixteen. Yep. Seven point one nine point six, as proposed by the constable. We have a second. Yeah, I'll second it. Right. And the vote. One second, please. Becca Taylor. Four. Tom. Four. Tom Sidia, sorry. Four. Um, John Dwayne. Yes. And Zach Dixon, four. Motion passes four to zero. Thank you very much. Um, uh, what I thought you were asking, Tom, is if I could post the, ch the changes. And I think that's a good idea. Okay. When I get the memo together for the select board, I'll also put it up on our office doors. And that way, if people are coming and going, they, I mean, yeah. we can't have people come in the office right now, but at least if they're walking by and sometimes we exchange paperwork and stuff out front, it'll be out there. And then okay. we'll advertise it and it will be discussed at a public hearing. Well, I'm, I'm just, I, 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 I'm kind of being direct because, I, you know, after 30 days, when somebody can lose their livelihood, uh, you know, they're going to look back and say, how did we, how did we try to contact them? And, you know, postage, well, the mail never arrived. I never saw it. Email, no, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have email anymore. My phone's dead. I, I'm, I'm, you know, due to COVID-19, I can't pay my phone bill, so I don't have that anymore. You know, it just goes on and on and on. So how do you get a hold of somebody? I've had people get a hold of me from the gas station attendant who knew somebody who knew who I was married to, who knew to tell me a message for my dad. 
Yeah. <laughs> if somebody in town knew that the warden had called me and was looking for me, <laughs> there'd probably be six people calling to tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, it does say in person as well in there. Yep. I mean, you would assume that you should be able to track them down on the harbor somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know where well, they. You know where they are. If you, first of all, they got to go through a bunch of different steps. First of all, which is like three separate fines, right? So I don't know. If this you, is just the fine. This is just like they, these are just simple written warnings. Mm -hmm. um, so even something like that, though, people need to be aware of. Yep. Okay. Uh, and it also, you know, is a way for them, the, the seven day clock to start ticking for somebody to, and of course you say that in the call, you say that in the email or the letter. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Documentation on your end, but it works. Yeah. Yeah. So the only other thing that wasn't really on the agenda, but it, it just came up. So I don't think that the chair could have reasonably anticipated it. I got an email on June 27th, which was Saturday from the Massachusetts Oyster Project. And I believe SAB did too, about mm -hmm. doing an oyster count. And it's supposed to take place during the month of July. I just, I honestly don't have time to, and, and so we might just say we're not going to do it this year. But um, I, I wondered whether it would be appropriate to try and just be something that the interns might be interested in doing. I, I did reach out to like the Center for Coastal Studies, Owen, because so, so this is like in a big picture sort of way. I thought maybe um, the Curly report that Owen's working on, that this might be some that we could use in there. But it's the first year that they're doing it and they talk about restoration and I haven't had a minute to call them and say, well, you know, we have an active wild fishery here. So, you know, our efforts, like for example, our propagation efforts are for harvest. Um, and it certainly it impacts um, water quality, but it's not for restoration purpose purposes. So I haven't had a second to call them and assess that out further. And I probably won't right now, um, but that's it. Owen, uh, was interested. John Real from Natural, Re Natural Resources Advisory Board was interested. And I just thought maybe putting a little group together, this is the first year we do something that could help our greater good. Uh, but it might, Owen was interested in a larger conversation. So um, it is July and it's not something that, you know, we could have really. Yeah, I hey, hey, Nance, I, I, I got the, I got the note from What's his name, Mike? And I, I, I got the the data sheets that they're what they're looking for. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'm scratching my head here because they're basically asking for you know, go 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 to an area, bring a hula hoop, put the hula hoop down, and then survey everything inside the hula hoop. So for example, for example, what's what's the depth of the of the water that you're in? Is it sand, rock, or muddy? What type of oysters are in there? Uh, are there any other marine organisms present? Are there any dead oysters? And then measure measure all the oysters. Okay, let's do that. Mm -hmm. But what is that? I mean, so so we get twenty people to help. Everybody has three hula hoops or one hula hoop and does three three uh, reviews. I I don't know what I don't know how they're gonna assess all that and come up with any sort of number. I mean, I don't know why we just don't give them our 2019 <coughs> oyster count and then review and then ask some of the guys, okay, here's the oysters you harvested. How much do you bring in at, bring in at the end of the year and do that arithmetic? Ask Johnny how many oysters are out there that aren't. I mean, I went out Sunday and I got two dozen oysters and I probably saw 10 dozen oysters, you know, the rest were too small. So I really, I can call this guy and try to get an understanding of what he's trying to accomplish. But for the life of me, I can't understand the hula hoop thing and how much. And how that gonna... is, that's when they're, whenever they're doing anything that's trying to get statistics, that's how they do it. It's a three foot wide hula hoop. So they 
they're measuring one town from the other. They're all using three foot wide hula hoops. So that's just what, a measuring thing. Yeah, and um, what are they gonna, what's the arithmetic? Tell me the arithmetic, John, that you think. Oh, I gotta tell you that there's gonna be, I, I, I'm with you. I see a lot of things that are gonna be unique to Wellfleet that are, first of all, when it comes to the depth of the water, uh, you know, how do you measure the depth of the water when you don't, what, are you there at low tide or, I, I, you know, I, I didn't read what you read, it sounds like. Like, I did not look at the data sheet. Um, but I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know how, many, how much time do they expect that this is going to take to do because it could just be that Wellfleet's got, I don't want to say it, but too many oysters to count. I mean, there's too much going on within one hula hoop that people are going to be going nuts trying to figure out what's in there. Does he need real-time data, or is this something where that um, the people who did the shellfish, the oyster grow-out project between the finger piers there and um, Mayo Creek, that area, they did transects and they did little cubes where they counted everything, but it was a couple years ago. Maybe All right, and I would remember who was Yeah, I would also go back to uh, Anna Maria Frankich, who yes. did that. Um, That's exactly it. <laughs> yeah, and she, she was talking about the numbers of oysters in the harbor. And she came, you know, she came up with a number, and somehow she did it. And so she, you know, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the, the only bottom line is, is that I don't know how she, what she used. To measure it you know but right. she did come up with a with a with a number I mean, this is what we figured by doing x y and z right. so maybe she's the one that designed this program i don't know so i guess we need more information from the people who are running it yeah um, this to do this for the month of july which starts in two days is going to be a little tough yeah you know? are they expecting and I don't know. it low tide <laughs> Yeah, and I kind of agree. I don't know if it was you, Becca, who sent me an email that said that, you know, yes. I don't know what Zeno and Ross are going to be up to, if they've already got enough work right now to keep them busy. If they were looking for something to do, I would say, yeah, if they can. But I, I think right. it's tough to pull this out. First of all, it was tough to get the notice about this as late as we did. And for us to pull this on somebody else with two days' notice is a little tough. Mm -hmm. It would be good, though. I mean, I think I, I'm I'm leaning towards that. It's a good idea to get start getting a baseline. For example, that's why Coastal Studies is interested in it because they're going to be they're going to be doing something eventually for us in terms of the health of the harbor and, and a revised curly report. And that's one of the things right there is they're going to need to figure out how much shellfish we have in in the harbor. That's so, something. That yes, this is definitely useful information and it's a good project, but maybe this is a better situation for either Audubon with their volunteer citizen scientists or the Center for Coastal Studies to run instead of fishermen who are trying to do work at low tide and our, <laughs> our interns whose job was looking up biodegradable and reusable products and presumably they need to make an income when they're not doing a couple of hours of work a week. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I really, I really, I, I like your, Becky, your view of this. I, I think you keep the interns focused on plastics. That, that's what we hired them for. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if the other groups can't do this, then maybe we get some volunteers yeah. and we just go out and fill out these forms. Nancy, this came through you, right? Yeah, and you know it is kind of last minute, and I'm I'm I, I'm like I can't I, I didn't even have to do as much as Tom did honestly, yeah. you know maybe we just let them know maybe Tom you can answer the email that came through to SAB and it's like a little short notice and we'd love to be more of a partner understanding the goals of it so that we're not just out there randomly and this is part of what one said too like what is it supposed to help. <laughs> right off the cuff I just thought oh maybe the new curly report um, but it sounds like it would be better if it was a thoughtful that if Wellfleet in particular took a more thoughtful approach about how it could help us mm -hmm. instead of like a lot of people trying to spin their wheels 
um, at the last minute because I think this is a project for volunteers. Natural Resources Advisory Board said, you know, it's a lot more complicated than the herring count, but he could certainly send something out to the herring volunteers, herring count volunteers, but it seems like something that should be an initiative that we as a community are interested in and not just a reaction to something that's being asked of us. I think everybody has contributed really valuable thinking right now, listening to people. So I, I guess what I would suggest is that you, if Nancy, if you're the point of contact or whoever wants to do it, whoever the fellow is that sent us this thing, to say we're, we're interested in the idea, we'd like to keep on top of how it went with the rest of the towns, but we're, we're not able to do it this year. And, um, and maybe Peter, see the work we, that's already been done. You know, we'd like to, I'd like to know what the results ended up being. We, in other words, we should keep a track of it, but I don't think that we're going to do it this year. So, um, Tom, did you say you wanted to respond to that? Well, I can, I can call this guy and, and, and say, here's where we are. Here's how many people we have. And, um, would it be worthwhile doing? You know, say he got 15 responses or 10 responses. Would that be sufficient to include us in the survey? Is that good with you, Nancy? Yeah, that's fine. But I think if you don't mind, mention the fact that we are an extracting harbor. We're not a, yeah. of course we're all, we, we want there to be areas of, and we like, we have like the Herring River permitted area. Um, mm -hmm where we do kind of have a little sanctuary in there, if you will. But, you know, this is a harbor that functions on a commercial um, fishery. Mm -hmm. Our, everything in, that he wrote talked about restoration. And, you know, we definitely do coaching. And I think that for a few years that helps, uh, but I wouldn't call it necessarily restoration. So I just think we should be honest about that too. We're an extractive harbor. And so it might not meet the kind of criteria of what they're looking to do anyway. Um, but we are blessed as well with lots of oysters around. So maybe it would help their survey just to know that. Well, I, you know, it'd be good for us to know the numbers. I have a feeling that, that the whole concept of the hula hoop, and uh, I don't know how you're supposed to decide where you put the hula hoop. Yeah. You just throw it. That's what Barbara Brennissel and um, Travis, our AmeriCorps, were working on. So now there's a, you know, there, we were trying to do a study of uh, um, monitoring our coaching efforts. And uh, I think there we created something smaller out of PVC pipe, but you just randomly toss it. And yeah, but where? Like in Shipman's Cove? Uh, anywhere. I mean, like we, well, we that, that, so that, in Herring River, we would do it. You, know, you you go to an area that well, my sense is that in most towns that have oysters that they're going to be doing this test they don't have nearly as many oysters as we do and that's why they can do that and they can say okay we got eight oysters today whereas we could sit there for a long time trying to figure out how many oysters are in a three-foot hula hoop mm -hmm. very true mm -hmm. okay well those are good thoughts you got that tom yeah, I got that. I, let me let me find out what this guy really is looking for. And tell him what we have, and tell him what we can do, and see if he says yay or nay. Even I, I even can go out, you know, two or three days and do, you know, sure, and do it. I mean, it's, it, I'm I'm looking at the the, the form, and it, it, it's not going to take more than twenty minutes, half an hour. Okay. Um, well, maybe I'll put you in touch with um, Owen then. Tom. Who's Owen? Owen from the Center for Coastal Studies. So I sent it out to Bob, yeah, okay. John Real, uh, Audubon. I sent it to, um, yeah, Natural Resources, Audubon, Center for Coastal Studies, and Barbara and John. Anyway, I just I my my gut on this, Nancy, is I just if, if somebody does the arithmetic in the back room and we're not involved after we give the data, and they come up with that there's. 10 million oysters in our in our harbor and we think there's 30 million i don't want to go and up up the ladder further if you know what i mean having a simple conversation with whoever's running the program to illustrate some of our concerns and thoughts he might just tell us a quick answer that you know it really wasn't designed for wellfleet 
used to sign for towns that don't have a good shellfish, but they're looking to restore the population, you know? Yeah, true. All right, let me find out. Let me try to try in the next couple of days and I'll send them an email tonight. Okay, that sounds good. That makes good. sense, Zach? That, that makes okay? sense. Uh, let's move on to anyone have um, future topics they'd like for the next meeting? I think Zeno is on and he wanted to maybe, if it not at this meeting, at the next meeting, give an update of uh, what he's been up to. Yes. Okay. Yes, so um, I don't know if you guys can hear me, uh, but I, um, so what Ross and I have been doing, we've been kind of um, doing more of the exploratory stuff. So Ross has reached out to a few of the um, different people that was on the, um, the list and also looked into some, some products. Um, also, both of us have been out helping and working for Jim O'Donnell uh, a few days and just learning more about shellfishing and well fleet in general. Um, later this week, I'm talking to a guy from this new company called the Oyster Common um, and it's not necessarily directly related to plastics in, in oystering, but it's um, just a new startup in the space. And he's going to try to find out what he knows about the industry. Um, and other than that, I think we're planning on going with Tom out to the Wellfleet um, grant to see what's happening there. Um, and just continuing to follow up on the leads that we have. Yeah, Nance, I got to get a hold of Johnny, see when he's out there next, so we can just go out and pick his brain. Yeah, I think um, maybe next week. Yeah. Okay. And, and these, I also got these guys um, spending some, going to spend some time with the recycle committee because they were very, very um, warm and welcoming that uh, the Shellfish Advisory Board took this initiative. So. And they've done a lot of work too. And we don't want to duplicate it if they already did it, you know? Yeah. So for future topics, um, I, uh, the, uh, the Curly Report follow-up sort of making some slow progress. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess that could be an update by the next meeting we're supposed to have a proposal from uh, from Owen at Center for Coastal Studies for what he could do for us. He sent uh, uh, Becca and I, I know he's got a, uh, a proposal, just a rough sketch of what he thought about what, uh, what would be involved in doing a follow-up curly report. And um, if, for those of you who don't know, the Friends of Herring River is paying for a a uh, an intertidal study that deals with they're going to be doing a lot of the stuff that was in the curly report originally but they're only doing the stuff that gets exposed they're not doing any of the fish that are in the deeper water nothing that's subtitle so but they're they're putting together they're going to do a report we're trying to figure out what going to be in that report that owned could replicate for us and uh you know us being the town of Wellfleet. So it's quite possible that a month from now, if we're going to be meeting in a month, that um, <laughs> formal proposal for us that I could talk about. Okay, John, I'll put that curly report update as a potential future topic. There you go. Anything else for future? Okay, then. Uh, oh. Is Helen trying to say something? Oh, that's trippy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Helen, if you can't really, it's like uh, close encounters here. The volume down. <laughs> um, okay, so should we look at the next meeting? Sure. <laughs> what do we got? Uh, I've got the tide chart here. Um, that is the wrong tide chart.
let's see here. August 9th. So at the beginning of August, there's some not so great set of tides. Beginning, well, really this, I guess it's really the second week. Okay. <coughs> second week of August. I think so, yeah, beginning like uh, Monday. It's like a 1.4 in the middle of the day. And, uh, is it the 10th or the 3rd? That's the 10th, I'm sorry, Monday the 10th. Um, Monday is good for me. Is it Monday evening, Zach? It would be Monday evening, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. What's the date on that? That's 8 10. 6 p.m. Sure. My calendar again. 10. Everyone okay with that? Yep. August 10th, 6 o'clock. August 10th, 6 p.m. Uh, I assume it's going to be a Zoom. Yep. We're not done. Okay. Um, in that case, people. I can make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Okay, Tom. We're done. I second that motion. Meeting adjourned at six forty-one. The tenth at six. Tenth at six. Okay. All right. Hi, <laughs> Sophie. Sophie, look. Say hi. I'm bad. Yeah. Whoop. <laughs> There's an ant for her to look at. No. <laughs> we lost her. <laughs> All right, guys. Right. Everybody have a great Thank evening. You. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for coming. Bye. Bye, Bye. Sophie. Bye.